Hello everybody. Today we're going to be going over relationships and how Power BI works with relationships, how relationships interact with the different tables, and how we can use relationships to build a quick model that can give us some insightful data real quick. So we've got our sample data in here. We've working with an individual. We're going to be working with some sample financial account data. So we're working with some individuals. Those individuals have accounts and those accounts have transactions. And then all of these different tables also have different dates to them. So then we also have our, our date table as well. So we have our date table, which we're going to want to filter by various different date items within our data. And then we also have individuals, which we want to filter accounts and then accounts that filter by transactions. Right, so let's go ahead and just go through what some of these items mean and how we can create these relationships. So we'll start with just the simple ones. So we'll start with just looking at the accounts and the individuals. So on our individual data, we, each individual has an ID. So that's very typical across all data sources. You should be able to get an ID or an index for some of your rows in the data. So of our IDs that are on our individuals, they also have accounts. So our accounts, they have an individual ID those two things are related to each other, right? So that's one of the best things about Power BI is you can just create relationships with your data to build those powerful visuals. So these are the two fields that have the same data within each other. So an ID for individual XYZ will have an ID of one, and then all of their accounts that individual XYZ has will show in the account table as individual ID of one. So when we relate these things, all you have to do in Power BI is just click on the column or field that you want to relate to the other field. So just click on ID, drag and drop. So just that simple, just drag and drop over to individual. And so what happened is you can see a little line was created. When you hover over the line, these are the relationships in the model. When you hover over these relationships, you'll see what is related between the various tables. So within this model, we have this relationship that is relating our ID on individuals to our many IDs on the account table. So a real quick walkthrough of what this line kind of just means and tells you this one on this side of the line on the left side of the line means that there's one value for our relationship on this side. So every value on our ID column on the left side of our relationship on our individuals is unique. So every value within the ID column on individuals is a unique value that can identify our individuals. And then on the right side, this star indicates many. So it indicates there are many IDs of the same thing on this account table. So again, these accounts go to an individual ID and there are multiple individual IDs that have multiple accounts. But then on the account table, its ID field, that's where that unique relationship is going to be to the transactions. Right, so we're going to have the account ID that goes into an account ID transaction. But before we even get into that, let me go ahead and show you what this data looks like without any relationships. So if we go ahead and just throw on some data with no relationships, just as an example of what this will look like, we can see that the data won't make any sense. There you go. We've already got a broken table. And so this is because we can't determine any relationships. So we've got two different two fields from two different tables that don't mean anything to each other so far in the model. However, all we have to do is create those lines. So just make the line real quick, drag and drop. And there we go. Now we have our table with IDs. Let me go ahead and name these better. <clears throat> now we have our table with our individual IDs. Let me make this a matrix real quick. So now that we can see that this individual with an individual ID of 1000 has these four account IDs tied to it. So these four account IDs go to individual 1000. Now it's quickly done by just a drag and drop of a line. That easy. Let's go into a date now. So if we throw on a date slicer, let's say we want to filter our date by the year that somebody opened their first account, so the year that a relationship was started. Let's go ahead and put on a year slicer <clears throat> from our date table. Switch this over to a drop down just because it's easier to work with. And all right, let me throw in a quick count as well. Counts. We can see stuff change here. All right. 
So a count of individuals. So currently, there are 7,500 individuals within our data set, right? So right now, if we filter by a date, that doesn't change because we don't have any relationship to that date. So this is just always going to stay the same. However, if we want to apply a date relationship and we want that date relationship to be by the first starting date of their relationship, all we need to do, again, just drag another line, but this time from our date table, the table that we want to filter, onto the table that we want to filter. So the table that we're filtering from into the table that we want filtered. So now, if we go over here, you can see that our number has gone down to the individuals that have opened within the filtered for a year. So it's just that easy. Just a little drag and drop, two, two simple columns, and there you go. Now you've got your data nice and clean. And then still underneath here is where that will get funky again with the relationships. Now that we're counting on individuals, we can't count that account table by the individuals. But you can throw on the number of accounts and then filter for them not being blank. And then now we will have the total number of accounts by each individual and the ID of those accounts. <coughs> if it loads, give it a minute, it's thinking. There you go. So there are a lot more efficient ways of doing those calculations to speed that up. We don't need to have that lag. We'll cover those in later videos. But just as an example of how we can get this data nice and clean pretty quickly, there you go. So there are three accounts opened by this one individual, count of individual, at this year. So this individual has three accounts, and they joined in 2021. And then just going one step further, accounts going down to those transactions. Again, just the same kind of idea, right? And so purposefully, I built this kind of in a waterfall way, right? So you can see that everything's going down top to bottom. So these arrows are pointing top to bottom. Let me show you a little bit clearer. Right, so what this kind of means, the reason why I did it this way is so this table, this date table, will filter our individuals. And then because our lines are pointing down, what that means is all of these other tables will be filtered in the same way. So this date table, when we filter by this year of 2021, all of our other items are going to be filtered by this same individual who opened their relationship by our filter date. So none of our other date context is going to be applied. So even though that there's an account open date, we don't have any relationship to that account date. So that's not we're not filtering by accounts that were opened. We're only filtering by individuals who started their relationship in the time frame we filtered for. So again, just going from that top to bottom waterfall kind of filtering is a very nice, easy way to think about how relationships are made and how to think about Power BI modeling. So our date table is going to filter individuals, which filters accounts, which filters transactions. Again, by the individual date that they opened. And then going the other way, since these arrows do not go upwards, since the arrow falls down as a waterfall, transactions do not filter up. So if we select a transaction ID, we would not filter up to the individual, right? Because we're only going down. But let's say we wanted to do that. So let's remove this filter. And so now we can see that all of our accounts are now counting because we don't have a relationship filtering our accounts or filtering our individuals by our accounts. It's only a one way. However, if we just simply click on our relationship, and edit the relationship and go to a two-way cross-filtering direction. Now our arrow is applied both ways. Now our accounts are also filtering our individuals. So when you go back to our data, now it's nice and clean. So as opposed to having to wait for an extra filter and having our data run slow over some inefficient syntax, there we go. Now we've got our data related in a nice clean way that can count stuff nice and easily. And when we filter by accounts, we'll also know what individual opened that account. All right, hope that helped. Let me know if there are any questions on relationships. They can be pretty confusing. Let me know if there are any questions in the comments or any thoughts on any other videos for any help that you guys need. I'm here to keep helping. Thanks. Bye.